Well, good afternoon and welcome uh, to another segment of the Jane Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Rastuccia, Vice President of Water Management Solutions for Jane. And today we have a really interesting program. And I'll tell you why I think it is so interesting. It's the benefits of mobile drip irrigation. And all of us who have been involved in conservation and sustainability and water management uh, know one thing for sure, and that is the time and effort we put into it today, oftentimes we don't see the results for maybe the next generation or the generation after. Right? A lot of what we're doing today on a conservation standpoint is uh, helping our children or our grandchildren. And so you don't see that immediate payback. Well, uh, mobile drip irrigation really changes that. And that's why I find it so fascinating because we've seen a lot of farms, a lot of acreage maybe being taken out of play or cut back because of water issues. And uh, uh, Monty Teeter and his group there at Dragonline, they have a solution for this to actually bring the acreage back in play. So I call it almost an immediate gratification, right? You can see your conservation efforts are actually going to good right away. And uh, so we're very fortunate to have Monty Teeter uh, speaking about this today. You know, uh, I met and saw, uh, saw Monty uh, a few years ago at a, at a show up in Idaho. Uh, he was winning an award, then he, I saw him do his presentation the next day. And uh, I was just fascinated with this product because it, it made so much uh, practical sense to me. But uh, the other thing that I was really impressed with was Monty himself. Uh, this is a person who's really dedicated his life to agriculture and technology and making things better, not just for where he makes his home, but really all over the world. And you know, we need more people like that uh, helping out. So uh, that's one reason why I like uh, Monty so much. And also the fact that he's actually using his own product on his farm successfully really meant a lot to me. So Monty, welcome uh, to our program today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and, and, and glad to be able to share our technology. Yeah, so the first question I wanted to ask just before you get going, Monty, is, you know, what is the purpose? Well, why, what, what is the purpose of mobile drip irrigation? Mobile drip irrigation, uh, for me, has been developed out of necessity. Uh, in our local area here, we pump from underground to irrigation wells, and we pump from the Ogallala Aquifer. And in some areas that we're involved in here, we've mined and I think that's a good term to use. We've just used it up. It takes about 6,000 years uh, for it to replenish itself totally and uh, uh, to fill up originally. Uh, but when you talk about where we're at, we've mined 60 to 70% of our water. And, and that's been a, a big number for us. When I started in the irrigation business in the early 70s, uh, we thought there would be no end to the use of the water. And uh, we had a lot of flood irrigation and I worked for an irrigation company and we had irrigation wells that were 1,000, 2,000 gallons a minute. And now today they're three to 600 gallons a minute. And so we've, we've depleted that aquifer. So I heard a hydrologist say one day, if we could save 25% of our water today, our aquifer would last 30 years longer. And that's, that's not a hard thing to do if we really put our mind to it. And so uh, being involved with pivots for over 40 years, with drip irrigation for over 25 years, uh, we, we kept abreast of a lot of new things, but it's hard to sell drip irrigation to a farmer that may not have water in two or three years or five years. So that's a huge investment that he, he hates to make at that time. And so over the time, uh, manufacturers have developed pressure compensating emitters uh, and that are self-flushing. And at that time, I thought, wow, this could maybe really work if we try to tie that to a center pivot. So I worked with a manufacturer for about three years to finally get some tubing made. And then upon that, I couldn't find anybody to try it because they said, how does it work? So, and I, I couldn't say, I know how it works. I think it'll work well, but how does it work? So we went to work and we uh, started patented some ideas and concepts and uh, actually uh, bought a farm. And since we've started this trek nine years ago, we've invested about one and a half million dollars into this project. Uh, but we see such a significant savings with the use of water, especially when we start working with less water 
the efficiency of savings is tremendous. So with that, I would say that uh, from developing the product, designing it, installing it, um, distributing it, marketing the product. Today, we're in over 20 states and over nine foreign countries. And some of our overseas business is just really growing fast. So we were just uh, notified we were awarded uh, uh, the top, we, we made it into the top five of exporters of the year waiting to see if we win number one. But we really worked hard at the exporting and never dreamed we'd ever export our product from the central United States to South Africa, Australia, Algeria, Saudi Arabia, Sudan. So we're just really amazed how fast our business is growing there. Yeah, congratulations on that too. Uh, number one or number five, it's still big to be in that top five. So uh, that, that's really tremendous. Well, thank you. And uh, I just wanted to take a second to remind everybody that we've got the chat open and uh, the Q&A open as well. So if you have questions, uh, you can uh, feed them into me through the chat or the uh, Q&A, and I'll do my best to uh, uh, bring those to Monty during the uh, presentation. And sometimes they just naturally get answered too, but uh, we definitely want to use those two uh, features to uh, ask Monty some questions. Okay. Would you like for me to start now? Yeah, let's get, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. okay. Well, I've, I've got a lot of information here and I hope I don't overwhelm anyone. And if uh, somebody uh, wants to ask some more questions or after the event, uh, feel free to give me an email and we'll continue the conversation. But, uh, you know, we've been asked. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say too, we'll be sending out a recording of the presentation to everybody at the end and we'll put your email on it so they can reach out to you. Okay, thank you. Well, we want to talk about mobile drip irrigation and we've coined the term MDI for that to kind of go along with SDI and some of the other uh, terminology that we have. But Mobile drip irrigation, people say, well, what is mobile drip irrigation? And first of all, it's not another type of sprinkler nozzle for a center pivot. It is mobile surface drip irrigation. And with that, we have filtration, and it's a, it is a drip system designed to pull behind a center pivot that actually drags on the ground, thus the name uh, Dragon Line. And what we've tried to do is we combine the efficiency of drip irrigation technology uh, with the flexibility and economics of center pivot. And what I mean by that is uh, all the time we've ever, always sold drip irrigation, we know it's far more efficient than a center pivot, but how, how, do you, how do you gain the efficiency of drip with a pivot? And so through, through this technology, we've been able to do that. And when I talk about economics, a, a pivot is, most of our growers already have pivots, so the economics to add drip irrigation is uh, two to $350 an acre to that existing pivot. Then you have the flexibility of the use of the pivot with your cell phone, with technology, through automation, through autonomation. Uh, you can just do anything with that pivot uh, that you want to today. So we can increase the efficiency and also the flexibility of the use of that pivot. And I always try to say that uh, Dragon Line is the greatest invention for a center pivot since the center pivot was invented. And we'll go through some of those things here shortly. Um, mobile drip irrigation is a placement of drip tubing that drags behind the center pivot in a precise placement. And we have different lengths that we can work with from 100 feet or from one foot to 100 feet. And uh, the Tubing has special emitters made that are pressure compensating and self flushing. And what that means is there's a little pressure regulator built into each one of the emitters. So, regardless of whether you're uh, right at the pivot uh, emitting water or you're at the very end of the system, they're all emitting exactly the same water. Today, the emitters that we use, uh, there's less than 1% flow variation from one end of the system to the other, which is just unheard of in the industry that we're involved in. And also we adapt to the end of a hose, rigid drops, or a manifold without sprinkler heads or pressure regulators. And Richard, this is a picture of what it would traditionally look like. This is out in an alfalfa field. 
and a lot of people wonder, well, how does how does it look dripping? Uh, this these are actually one gallon an hour emitter emitters on three inch spacing, and uh, it just shows how it uh, drips there in the field. And they say, well, how does it operate? This is a system being pulled in the field, so there's very little drag on the uh, system itself. And uh, you can notice here, can you see my cursor there, Richard? We sure can. Uh, you can see this system has been running. This is like the third or fourth cutting of hay. Um, the wheels have no wheel track out in the field. There's no mud accumulation on them. Um, it's a very uh, clean, neat system. This system also shows a, a series of sprinkler heads that we've left attached with a dual valve. So we can either run spray nozzles or we can run to the dragon line. So if they want to incorporate a herbicide, they still can. Or if they want to germinate their alfalfa crop when they first start, they can easily. Uh, or they can uh, uh, switch and go to dragon line. Yes. So Monty, we've got a bunch of questions already. <laughs> okay. And uh, this is this is great news, right? So the first one, right? You see those great straight rows behind me of the almond trees. And uh, most people are used to uh, straight rows, but with uh, uh, mobile drip irrigation, you need to do circular rows, right? Uh, how much harder is that to put in a circular row? Does that create a problem for anybody? Very good question. Um, you know, in order to utilize the best uh, that we can uh, use our technology is to get every drop of water on the soil. Planting in a circle and planting in a circle is very advantageous. And with the current technology of today with GPS and all the precision farming, it's actually there's 30% less turnaround time planting in a circle than planting straight rows. And it's just a matter of management and just the change of the culture of the way people think of planting in a circle versus straight rows, if that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And then we've got another one here asking about application rates. Are they similar to sprinklers? Uh, everything's applied the same. We have a, uh, a, a, a company that makes our sprinkler charts for us. And they're state of the art. They've been producing sprinkler charts for almost 50 years. And uh, it, it'll match up to what a traditional sprinkler chart would look like. Uh, it shows the very first drop how long the drop tubing will be, what the pressure will be. Uh, and in a sense, you start off uh, maybe only a one to two foot long and at the end you'll be 20 to 50 feet long. So uh, it'll be adjusted to the requirements, but you'll, you'll adjust your percent setting the same as traditional nozzles. Okay, yeah, interesting. So uh, yeah, so those, it, it's just a matter of doing some calculations, right? Yes, yeah. The, the main advantage, advantage uh, that we have when we're, we're doing our calculations, uh, most uh, nozzles that are used cannot get small enough uh, because they plug and they just are impossible to get too small. But when we start off with one foot of tubing, that's like a half-sized nozzle. So we stop wa over watering that first span or two spans and place the water out at the end of the system where you need it. So a lot of times on small gallonage wells, we'll save up to 10 to 12% of the water to use out on the end of the system rather than wasting it on the first. Yeah, wow. So uh, someone's wondering why you don't need pressure, a uh, pressure regulator with Dragonline. Good question. We have pressure compensating emitters. So there's a basically a pressure regulator built into each one of our emitters. It's a silicon diaphragm that you know, it's, it's bad to say never wear out, but there's no seals, O-rings, or springs for that to wear out. It's just an amazing product. So it, it flexes as you have more pressure, it restricts the flow, less pressure, it lets off, but we have uniformity of less than 1% flow variation through the whole system with that pressure compensating emitter. Yeah, and so we've been learning a lot in our Lunch and Learns about uh, fertilizer, nitrogen efficiency. Uh, we've learned that nitrogen efficiency across the United States is very low, a very low number, uh, kind of alarming. Uh, it sure seems to me that this would be a great way to apply 
uh, nitrogen and other fertilizers uh, uh, to your plants. Uh, are, are people doing that or is it successful? Oh, very successful. I've, I've uh, been using it on my farm for five years and we use liquid nitrogen every year. And uh, you precisely place a fertilizer on the ground, not in the air, not on the leaves, not in the, lost in the wind. So, you know, we feel we pick up 15 to 20% use of the water or the fertilizer, uh, especially liquid when we're applying it uh, through our system where we precisely place it. If, if we're on 30 inch rows, we're applying that at 15 inch between the, the plant. Uh, it's right in the center. So our plant's only 15 inches away from fertilizer and it naturally goes in the soil. And I'll share that here shortly uh, in more detail. Okay, that, that'd be great. And just one more question here. Um, uh, somebody's asking about the abrasive wear on these lines, you know, from being dragged across the field. Uh, is it a special tube or do they wear out over time? What, what's that situation? Well, uh, thank you for asking that. We, we start off uh, with the, at the very start of the manifold, uh, we start off with 10 feet of flexible hose that's non-kinkable. And this is part of our patent that, uh, and then the dragon line attaches to, to it. So we have 10 foot of flexible hose, which will take abrasion, uh, dragging, you know, hitting on the surface to start with and dragging over stalks and plants. And then the dragon line is attached to that. The dragon line tubing itself is a 50 mil tubing that's very durable. And then the hose is a half inch a uh, heavy duty hose that is, like I said, is non-kinkable. So this allows us to reverse also, which probably that'd be a good thing to talk about here. So you go one direction, reverse, it just curls around and pulls the polyethylene tubing right with it without kinking. So uh, that's, uh, it took quite a while, uh, several months to uh, make that happen, uh, to keep, because if you had two, two hoses kink, it's too many. Nobody wants to go out and straighten them out. So we had to get it where we didn't have any. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm smiling right now because I could just imagine uh, figuring that out, right? And uh, going through that process had to be quite a process, but it had to feel great when you got it got it worked out. Yes, yeah, and as you can tell in this picture, the wheel track stays dry. We're watering on each side of it, and you can see the drivetrain running dry. And uh, we'll talk about that more. But a lot of farmers say we they will save up to. 75% of wear and tear on gearboxes and U-joints and drive lines, and less pull with their motors because they're not pulling in mud, they're just running on dry ground. And if they have a problem with the gearbox, they can change that out on dry ground rather than in the mud. So it's a huge advantage. So we've seen, uh, we, we, we saw the example of uh, using drip on the alfalfa field. Uh, there's really, is there any restriction to a crop that you could use this on? We have not, and I'll go through those more in our presentation here. I've got a lot of different crops that we're using, uh, a lot of different flexibilities. Uh, actually, we're going to be installing a drag line on a gold mine, a uh, surface wow. gold mine, uh, to leach, to leach uh, gold out of the uh, ore. Uh, so we'll be doing that next month. But uh, th this is a typical uh, system of, that we have today that we call our hybrid system. And um, it just shows that we attach a cable assembly uh, to the structure down to our manifold or another cable. There's a quarter inch cable that's stretched through the system. And then we attach our hose manifold to that cable. And then we uh, attach these V-jack hook assemblies. And that, that keeps the system centered underneath the center of the system so that when the system is pulling, it pulls from the center of gravity from the center of the pivot. So you don't have a side load on that pivot watering. And then this shows 10 foot of flex line and then the dragon line. And then we put a, a, uh, a, a, an end plug that has a cap that you can unscrew uh, so if you ever do have contaminants or something in the system that gets past the filter, you can flush out your tubing. And then this example shows one more thing. We have a winch system to help understand. We'll show some more pictures here shortly. But this is something new that we patented uh, called the dual winch system. We have a winch that mounts on each side of the span. And 
uh, what this allows us to do as we go through this as we can water in a strip, we can plant in that wetted strip, we can germinate the crop in that wetted strip, and then as the plant emerges, we can loosen one side and tighten the other side up and move that, move it over four inches or six inches or whatever you want to and move it out of the way so you're not dragging on that crop. And so you water right next to it and we have some pictures to show that. And then also we've developed a winch to go in right in the center of the system. Um, so we can use this as a hybrid to water a low crop or we can raise it up under the trussing to water high crop with the same system. So we used to have to try to figure out, well, what system do we use? But well, now we have one system that we've determined that will work anywhere and we call it the hybrid system. And then people can determine whether they want a 30 inch spacing on the manifold, a 20 inch spacing, a 17 inch or 80 inch, it's whatever they want to grow. Uh, so uh, that's uh, about our, our hybrid. And I have a short video clip here uh, to show uh, this is on my farm. Actually, I only have 150 gallon a minute with this 75 acres of corn. So we've really, uh, really leveraged our water on my farm. Uh, but it shows a winch system here uh, connected uh, to the manifold cable. And it just shows the low application rate on the soil that really has a low impact. This shows uh, germinating a crop. Some of it's starting to emerge there. You can see how the dragon line is dragging on the soil surface. And it drags such a slow rate that we never have wear on it. This just shows this year we found the germination between spray nozzles and the dragon line was tremendous this year. Uh, we got about a 10% better germination because we, we wet up a strip of soil and it stays wet around the seed longer then with the spray nozzles, it dries out uh, before you can get back around. And then this just kind of shows watering in the center of the row. Uh, this is a corn crop before we raise the manifold uh, on this system. But this shows the dual winch system a little better uh, where you can loosen one side and tighten the other side to adjust the spacing for the crop. This just shows a corn field on a low setting or you could use it on alfalfa or mint or something like that. And this shows a high profile where you actually raise it up in a higher position. So I hope this gives you a little better example of what that winch system and how it works. Uh, uh, here, this, this shows a dual or the V-jack hooks. They just hook into the trussing at each truss rod connection. And uh, this is in the raised up position at the, towards the end of the season. Uh, you can see how the dragon line follows in each row. We water in a circle, so it, it's not, we have no issues planting in a circle. And this just shows the winch that's mounted out in the center that helps raise that uh, system up out of the way to, to raise it up higher or to lower it. So this is, a, this is what we call our new hybrid system, and we're very, very proud of it. It's worked out very well this year. So that's super cool. Uh, that, that, like I said, I had to be really fun to figure all that out. Now, uh, um, based on experience, you know, what, what should somebody expect in the uh, total life of a system? The tubing, with it being 50 mil tubing, you know, we, we have tree rows out here that it's laid out directly in the sun in one spot for 40 years and it's still okay. Uh, so uh, when we talk about the link how long we think the system will last. Uh, our flexible hose is a very durable hose. The tubing is very durable. Uh, really the only thing that can cause issue with our system is if you have contamination and don't filter your water properly and plug the emitters. Um, we, we believe it's easily a, a 10 to 15 year system, easy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, uh, so, um, you know, with the soil texture, this is probably something you have to look at as well to figure out your uh, emission spacing and, and uh, gallons per hour. 
you, you, there's a lot of things to take in consideration, uh, but usually we're always using depths of water and usually people want to use dragon line when they're about out of water. Uh, so, but we are finding that people that have too much water and we'll show an example here, uh, they have lots of water and they're having energy problems. So can we, you know, cut back and use less water to raise the same crop? And the answer is yes. But I'll continue here with my slides here and we'll get to that. This just shows another style. We have some companies want a rigid drop and they want to hold everything in place. This is out at Utah State University. Uh, so this is a rigid drop and you can see uh, we have clips that uh, uh, hold that clip onto the truss rod down to the drop and back up to the truss rod that keeps that drop from moving back and forth. It's a rigid schedule 80 drop. And then it's also tied on two cables to hold the position. So we call this our rigid drop assembly. Uh, but that's, that's just one of the other styles that we have available. Uh, when we talk about our water application, uh, we, we deliver that precisely and in it's uniformly distributed to a predetermined place on the soil. You know, when we talk about uh, all the uh, uh, precision farming, people spend thousands of dollars getting to precision farming, precision planting, precision fertilizer, precision everything but then they still just sow the water out on the soil. Well, this, with Dragon Line, we, we determine where we wanna place that water and the amount of water we wanna place. And then we deliver the water, the fertilizers directly to the soil surface and not on the foliage and not in the wind. And so this, we believe, we bring precise irrigation to precision farming for center pivots. And this is a good example. This is in South Africa, actually. Um, this is a hybrid system. Uh, it shows uh, watering next to some soybeans. It's a black tight soil that normally has lots of issues with getting stuck and uniformity with the sprinklers. But we water right next to the system and we're not watering the bed. We're not germinating all the weeds. And then as the plant grows, we can move this over uh, as the plant grows. And then this shows he has a dual system, a dual valves that he can also use as sprinklers if he wants to, or he can manage to his uh, dragon line. And germination, chemigation, and fertigation are still possible in conjunction with standard nozzles by adding the dual valve assembly. We can still uh, uh, accomplish that. So it's a win-win. We can use traditional nozzles or we can use drip irrigation with the center pivot. Uh, this just shows uh, the dual winch again. Uh, the one reason I wanted to show this, we started uh, making this system for hemp growers. Uh, hemp growers came to us and said, how can we irrigate with a pivot and keep our hemp dry? And so we've developed this, I think this was on five foot spacing um, and they could water in a precise strip plant their seeds in that strip because they may get up to $20,000 an acre with their seeds and they want to be able to germinate those precisely. And then as the seeds germinated, then we could tighten one side and loosen one side of the winch and winch it over uh, a few inches and water right next to those new plants. And uh, with the hemp, it has to, we want to eliminate all the weed growth we can. So and rather than wetting all the surface, we just wet uh, the strip, and then as the plant grows, we winch that over to the center of the row and without getting onto the hemp plant. And then this has the dual valves on here also. So uh, I might share that with you, Richard. Uh, do you have any questions at this point for that? So interesting, right? So smart, right? We watched Kevin Stewart talk about hemp, and uh, gosh, if I remember correctly, uh, about 30 some percent of the cost of hemp was in the labor to keep the weeds out of the uh, fields. And man, that's, uh, that's gonna save those hemp growers a lot of uh, labor time, you know, reduce weeding. Um, we yeah. did have a question though, um, is this used on a quarter mile pivot? Can you use it on a half mile pivot? Is there restrictions? No restriction. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, when you utilize it on a half mile system, the cost per acre is, is half. Uh, you know, it, it's very inexpensive for a half mile pivot, maybe down around $100 an acre uh, to install a whole system on a half mile system. But they do water 480 acres. Uh, so it's very, very uh, inexpensive way to convert that system. And 
most half milers, you know, started out with around this area at 2,400 gallons, and now they're maybe at 1,000 or 800 gallons a minute. So they're really struggling to water very much soil at all right now. Right. So that's a good question, yeah. 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 Interesting, thank you. Okay, well, I wanna talk just a moment about traditional sprinkler heads, and we talk about the efficiency of application. And the, uh, the traditional nozzles are always advertised to be 95% or greater in efficiency, and they are in application of spreading the water on the soil surface. If you have a, a concrete floor and you have a good application uh, and you, you wet that whole surface, uh, that's how they measure the application. But we wanna talk about the use of the water. We wanna talk about getting 95% of the water in the soil, not spreading it out in the surface and in the air. But, but those nozzles lose their efficiency due to uh, water, watering the leaves, uh, nozzling to uh, a loss of water due to evaporation, to wind, sun, unlevel terrain, and soil conditions. And this is just a good example of, uh, this is probably a 95% efficient package in application, but this is what happens when the wind blows. Uh, so we lose that efficiency and the less water you have, uh, the greater loss that you have. If you have only 200 gallons a minute that you're watering with, you could lo easily lose 90% of it trying to water on a windy day. Uh, so uh, these are some things that we focus on with the use of center pivots is we have air losses through air evaporation and wind drift. We have foliar losses through plant interception and net canopy evaporation. And then we have ground losses. We have surface evaporation and surface runoff and deep percolation, which we can solve that with the use of dragon line. We deliver the water to more than a 50% larger area. And also we promote low impact and better infiltration rate of that soil. And when we talk about low impact application, uh, it means keeping the soil more mellow with little or no soil compaction which often develops or forms a hard pan during the watery se watering season. So you start off in the spring with traditional nozzles and the soil takes the water. Then you start melting all those particles and you start to have sealing. And then you have to speed up your system to keep from getting stuck and run off. So it, it just works just the opposite. The Dragon Line, we want to put on as much water as we can in a slow application rate and we want to bank the water rather than evaporating it or running it off. We want to increase the soil moisture by getting the water in the soil. And this is my farm here and only have, um, uh, this was taken when I had uh, uh, 200 gallons a minute on this farm, now I'm down to 150. But this shows the traditional watering nozzles. This shows dragon line. Um, we're putting on an inch and a quarter of application and you'd think, well, we would never run water off. This is looking down from the tower. You can see the water puddling. We're melting all those clods. We're, we're, we're separating out the particles, creating compaction. And this is a dragon line on this side. And we water in strips. And through capillary action, the water actually goes in the soil and the air comes out rather than on this side we seal the air in the soil, and so the water can't go in until the air comes out. Um, I have a good example here with this uh, schematic here. Whenever you water from the surface of the soil, you wet a band of soil one to five inches thick, you trap air in the soil, and at that point, uh, uh, water can't get out, or wa air can't, water can't go in until the air gets out. And Richard, if you wanna, a good example of this, if you take a bottle of water, hold your nose and try to drink it, you can't. Yeah. You have to let, the air has to come out before the water can go in. And also as we water here, then we leach our herbicides, we leach our fertilizers deeper into the soil, sometimes past where we can't utilize them. Where with Dragon Line, we water in a predetermined spot. We have movement of lateral movement with our water and the air comes out. So actually the water sucked into the ground with capillary action, air comes out, water goes in, air comes out, and our wettest spot is where this black box is here. Our, our herbicide and our pre-plant stays in place by the plant rather than being leached. And this is a 
test done by K-State, they wanted to know where that water went. And so this simulates on 60 inch spacing with the dragon line. Uh, and they put uh, neutron probes eight foot deep and they measured where the water went. So the water just does what we said. It goes in and comes out and the wettest part is here about uh, 20 inches below the surface. Uh, wow. So you have a corn plant here and a corn plant here. And this just shows that we have a, a 30 inch corn planting, but our system is on 60 inch spacing on this example. So we have a wet row, dry row, wet row, dry row, but the water moves to the center and the air comes out. So the water moves across those roots and uh, 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 gets, them, gets them wet at that point. So uh, do you have any question at that time, Richard? Yeah, a couple of questions. One, um, what is the typical emitter spacing distance? Okay. And it probably varies for all, you know, for different crops, but what are you typically seeing? We, we've standardized the uh, spacing to six inch spacing. We use a two gallon per hour emitter on six inch spacing. Uh, this way we have a large flow path for our emitter. Uh, so when you're talking about usually subsurface drip irrigation, it's a 0.2 gallon per hour, and we're using a 2.0 gallon. So it's a huge flow path, so we'll have less uh, intrusion of, uh, of organics and things like that, we believe. So we like the larger emitter, and then on six inch spacing, uh, helps us keep the length of the tubing to a minimum. Yeah, interesting. And then uh, uh, one other person had a question here. Um, I, and I know you answered it, they just need a little review on um, how do you reach different flow from the center part of the pivot versus the furthest uh, line out? Okay, the length of the tubing dictates the amount of flow. So if you only need one gallon a minute flowing at the start, that tubing will be shorter. And if you need five gallons a minute for that area, then the tubing would be five times longer than at the start. So it's just based upon the length of the tubing dictates the amount of flow. And then we run a chart to give us that example. Right, okay. And so then the uh, tubing that's furthest away from the center is just gonna be a lot longer than the tubing uh, close in. And this is what you calculate out. Correct, correct, yeah. I'll, I'll continue here real quick. Uh, we reduce and eliminate the wheel tracks and uh, problems and the slippage and of muddy tires. A lot of times people don't calculate when they're watering in the field and they have their system set at 20% uh, watering and they wanna make a circle in 100 hours, let's say. If, if they're having 20% of slippage, they're actu actually probably putting on 1.2 inches of water or such a matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so we eliminate that slippage and we get to the precise uh, application amount then of if you put it on 100 hours, it's going to be around in 100 hours because that wheel track is dry. And then we reduce wear and tear on gearboxes and motors. And this are some, some examples here of a wheel track after corn at the end of the season. Uh, usually in some areas, these tracks will be two foot deep. We just eliminate that uh, wheel track completely. Uh, this is on soybeans. Uh, the dragon line drags behind the wheel track, so we have no wheel track. So for some growers, it's worth putting dragon line on just to get rid of wheel tracks. We believe we save 20 to 50% of the overall use of water, but that also equates to energy savings and pivot wear and tear. And so uh, we might talk about when we say 20 to 50%, how can we really make that statement? And this is a study that was done by the USDA down at Bushland, Texas by Amarillo. And what it shows here is they did a two-year test. They put lysimeters in the soil, which weighs the soil. They applied 1.2 inches of water over a two-day period of time. And they measured the evaporative loss on watering bare soil in April, May, June. You know, when, when we have the hot uh, spring winds, watering bare soil, we don't know how much water do we actually lose. And after two years of study, they've shown on the clay soils, it's harder to get the water in the soil, that they actually lose up to 79 hundredths of that 1.2 inches of water. On sandy loam soil, they lose up to 60 hundredths, which is 50%. Uh, so 
just applying water to the bare soil surface, we lose up to 50% of the water with traditional watering. So we want to make use of that water in the soil. And this is probably something that's more interesting if no, nobody gets anything else out of this today other than this, but with center pivots, if, you, if you, your water application is more than 1.2 inches of water in rotation, your average loss is only 47%. But if you water less than 1.2 inches of water, your average loss is 72%. And that ties to this graph is that the more often you water, the more often you're uh, uh, watering that bare soil, which you have more evaporation. And that's just uh, the opposite with traditional nozzles. As you water, it gets sealed off, so you speed your system up. So you just naturally evaporate more water. So uh, this was a test that was from K-State University here in Garden City. They showed uh, the percentage of evaporative loss between nozzles three foot off the ground and our dragon line was 35% savings before the canopy closes the, the soil surface. And so when I show this picture here, I used to show this as a, a pivot dealer and just so proud that we blacken that soil. And then after you really understand what we're doing is evaporating all this water, we've mined 70% of our water from our aquifer. If, if everybody would quit evaporating their water, we could save 25% so easy. So this just shows, um, uh, you know, or, or tells a story with all the pivots uh, we've sold in our area. There's about 8,000 in our general area here. We just have sold a lot of pivot evaporators out yeah. there. Uh, so uh, just to go on here, we believe that there's a big advantage on keeping the foliage dry. We believe that we reduce insect infestation. I don't spray for uh, spider mites anymore. Uh, since I have dragon line. Uh, we reduce fungus and disease intrusion, which on some potato growers, they feel they're saving 40% on chemicals on spraying uh, fungus. Uh, we, we eliminate leaf burn and plant shock because some days that plant's 110 degrees out there and you throw 55 degree water on it. So it slows it down and then it's got to warm back up to start growing. And then we reduce fertilizer and chemical and poor water quality accumulation on those leaves. So the leaves can uh, breathe and photosynthesis uh, occurs normally without issues. So we've seen that really happen uh, where people had uh, uh, salinity in their water. Uh, we've really helped solve that issue. This just shows on my farm when uh, raising cotton a few years ago, watering from the surface. I have one span of spray nozzles and then watering with dragon line and getting all the water on the soil and keeping the leaves dry. So that's just an example there to show what that looks like. And this is mid season, uh, watering between the rows, keeping the plants dry. Uh, this is an older uh, system. This actually, this system's a 1972 model pivot with new, new dragon line on it. But he's watering cotton and you can see, we just uh, drag it right between the row. We keep the, the leaves dry. And he's in an area where he's only permitted to use 10 inches of water a year with irrigation, uh, where the other areas we have 24 inches. So he had to do something to uh, save water and he's, he's maintained the same yields as his other fields where he has more water. This is a picture of a strip row cotton down by Lubbock. Uh, this grower only had 90 gallon a minute. And by the use of dragon line, we went strip row cotton and we water uh, between the rows, uh, every other row, we leave this blank and then add two rows and water between that row. So that helps us uh, uh, control the use of that water. Uh, this is a, a, a new uh, picture, uh, a new grower down in Mexico uh, showing strip row cotton, cotton there, uh, which is uh, unique to the area. It's the first farmer that's planted skip row cotton with the use of dragon line. And he only has about 350 gallons a minute, uh, I believe uh, for about 80 hectares. So it's a huge circle that he's watering here. I'm very satisfied with the results. Uh, so when we talk about energy savings, you know, when we use less water, we're naturally gonna have less cost, less labor costs, less wear and tear and less energy costs. 
In some places in South Africa, they're up around 24 cents a kilowatt hour. Mostly around here, we're about eight cents. And other areas out in the Northwest, they're less than that. But this is a graph here that I was asked to put together. Uh, and we have some assumptions here of pumping 150 foot ahead, eight cent electricity, of pumping 2000 gallons a year, uh, running through some uh, pipeline, no elevation changes. And what if we could save 30% of our water? What would that look like in savings of water and energy? And with this example, um, it, the difference between 1,000 gallon a minute and 700 gallons a minute at the end of the season is $3,800 worth of energy cost. Uh, if you run diesel, it would be $8,300 a year. Uh, well, that's $33,000 in 10 years of savings. Uh, we would save 36 million gallons of water a year, which that's actually 110 acre feet of water. Uh, that's enough water to supply the average household of 300 gallons a day, uh, 329 homes a year of savings. And that would be 360 million gallons in 10 years that we would save. We would save one to $2,000 a year in maintenance on pivot gearboxes and motor. That's equivalent to 10 to $20,000 over 10 years. And then we have wheel track maintenance, which could be $7,500 or more in 10 years easily. Uh, we have nozzle uh, and regulator repair, which would be, we estimate about $500 a year or $5,000 in 10 years. And then when you talk about savings of fertilizers, herbicides, and chemicals, uh, that's a personal preference of what we're going to do, but we feel we're going to save at least 15% on those items. So, Richard, do you have any questions or can you see that chart okay? Yeah, we can see it's just amazing the savings that are there. You know, I uh, so appreciate what you're doing here. That's for sure. No, and and you'd ask you know to help answer the cost. You know, with our new hybrid system with 120 mesh filtration, and this would be an automatic filter. Um, you know, the installation uh, cost will range between uh, $200 to $350 an acre including all those things to add that to an existing center pivot. Uh, so if you have less gallons, it'll be less dollars than more gallons. The more gallons, you have bigger filters. Uh, so at 200 gallons, your system would be a lot less expensive than an 800 gallon system. Uh, we, we had a launch in South Africa two years ago, and since then we've sent over $750,000 worth of product there. And uh, they've adapted very fast to the dual winches, to our manifolds, to the dual valves. It's just incredible what they've done because here we just have, in the States it appears, we just have abundance of water and we have protection. If we don't raise a crop, we can get paid. And then somebody's uh, wondering about uh, cost share. How do we get a cost share to get the government to help pay for part of it? But in the other countries, they don't have anybody to have a safety net. They have to save water themselves. This particular farmer that did put these systems on has gone from surface drip back to pivots, which he originally had pivots. He's put pivots back on, he's put uh, drip irrigation back on with mobile drip irrigation. And he went from 180 hectares to 600 hectares. So it's just made his farm alive again. Uh, this was one farmer in South Africa that bought this system with um, manifold spacing on one meter wherever, a little over every three feet. And before he planted that crop, he was wanting the one meter uh, spacing. Uh, he decided to plant tomatoes on this field, which I, I never would have dreamed we'd plant tomatoes. But he, as you can see, he took those one meter drops and he tied them together a little closer to water on each side of the tomato plant. And I thought, well, that's good, but how are you, how are you gonna continue to water it? And then, they sent this picture and they're watering right over the top of the tomatoes. And I said, wow, how's that going to work? But they control the water up on that bed and they're not wetting that whole bed. And they're saving all that water that they normally would be wasting. And then this is a picture a little later in the season uh, of the dragon line dragging on top of the tomatoes. And then this is towards the end of the season. And it's the best tomatoes he's ever raised with this pivot. Uh, so it's just amazing uh, what we've learned there with uh, 
raising tomatoes. Uh, this is a picture uh, of, of potatoes. Uh, I've always tried to keep the dragon line off potatoes and trying to figure out a way. But over in South Africa, they, uh, we had a field day and they had guys come and look and the farmer the next day ordered 21 systems of dragon line. Wow. And, and uh, he said, it's a no brainer, we'll make it work. Uh, so people said, well, can I plant potatoes in a circle? Uh, they planted in a circle. And uh, this is showing how the water drips on the soil. There's very little on leaves. We don't have runoff. We don't run in the wheel tracks. So we're utilizing all this water now that was uh, being wasted before. And, and in the meantime of the 21 systems being shipped to South Africa, uh, the farmer decided, well, if I left off the first span, I could uh, have dragon line on five more sprinklers. So we left the first span off and we watered uh, with spray, traditional spray nozzles. And they have uh, conditions with their water, which really affects leaves, uh, which we are unaware of. So this first span has spray nozzles on it. And as you see, as we get to the next section, uh, this is a dragon line. Uh, the farmer, uh, nozzled back his systems with the use of dragon line. He, he, he used 40% less water, 50% less energy, 40% less chemical, and his yield was slightly better than before. Uh, so he was really happy because he could raise more acres of potatoes uh, with the same amount of water. So that's really an eye opener when you watch uh, that uh, picture there. Yeah, what, and then, a what a difference. <laughs> what a difference. And we didn't know how it would work on onions. I've always been trying to figure out how to get the dragon line to drag in strips uh, around the onions. But there they've just dragged on the canopy and had excellent results on these onions. Hmm. Uh, this is another uh, example. I'm about to the end here. Uh, people wonder, well, how, do they stay in place in the field? And this is an extra tall system that was designed for sugar cane uh, in South Africa. And uh, in the meantime of planting the sugar cane, he wanted to, he planted uh, butternut squash. And you can see uh, as he made circles, how those stayed in those strips. Uh, he watered on each side of the butternut squash, had an excellent crop, but you can see how the dragon line just stays in place and drags in the same position all the way around the field. Uh, and so this, uh, to help finish up here, you know, I just wanted to share this. Um, instead of uh, evaporating and wasting water, we want to get the water in the soil. And we believe our mission is to make every drop of water count. So we want to bank water for the future around the world. And so uh, with that, I uh, just want to thank you for the time to let me share about Dragon Line today so I could answer a few questions if there's some. Yeah, Monty, like I said, thank you for a great presentation. We so appreciate what you're doing. I, I had one last uh, question and then a, then a follow up. And somebody was asking if I'm buying a center pivot uh, to use Dragon Line on, um, can I save a lot of money on the, uh, uh, <clears throat> on the pivot? construction due to the lighter materials? Well, you, most of your pivots will um, use the same material. The savings, the savings that you would have rather than uh, buying all your sprinkler nozzles, uh, you would save that cost, which would be four to $6,000 uh, of the initial cost uh, with uh, close spacing drops, which you could add that into the cost of savings then to put your dragon line on. Uh, but um, uh, so we do have some people ordering new systems with just putting Dragon Line on to start with. Uh, so that's been uh, a good thing for us here. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, Monty. The thing that I really appreciate about this is uh, it's sustainable in two ways, right? It's saving water, better application rates, the labor, all those things you talked about. And then also for the growers that already have a substantial capital investment in a center pivot, they don't have to just throw that away. They can yep. still use it. That doesn't go to waste. So uh, I, I see savings in, in two ways there. And I just think that's fabulous. 
you know, the pivot that was used for a carrier for water. And I believe that, uh, especially out in California, that's where we don't have very many pivots, but sometime that Imperial Valley, I believe, will change and we will use, uh, people will buy center pivots for the use of Dragon Line in those areas. Yeah. So again, thank you, Bonnie. I wanted to say uh, uh, we're going to be announcing, you know, we had our uh, video contest uh, that started a few months ago. We do have a winner. We're going to announce the winner next week. And uh, you might have even gotten a sneak peek at that uh, winner during Monty's presentation today. So uh, I, I just wanted to mention that. And then also on Friday, uh, my guest is going to be uh, Wendy Miller. She's president of the American Society of Landscape Architects. And she's going to fill us in as to what's happening in uh, uh, landscape uh, architecture in the United States. So that should be great to see. Uh, look for an email from me this afternoon with Monty's email address and a recording of this so you can watch it again. And remember, we're on Google, Apple, and uh, Spotify podcast now, so you can always watch us there. Monty, again, thanks so much for a great presentation. I, I really love this technology. Uh, thanks again for doing it. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.